Welcome to the Status Report highlight for the 21st of February 2017. And as always today, we're going to kick things off with Creative Director Brian Hicks, giving us the latest information on the current development process. We're continuing to push new builds through Experimental and Stable Branch, and onto Stable Branch as we try to address the remaining critical issues with Point 0.61. Since the last status report, we've been able to address several issues and memory management on the client, pushed several improvements to server performance, resolved a few known server crashes, resolved several of the performance issues tied to light sources, and we are continuing to address Invisible Infected, Additional Client Crash Issues, Server Memory Consumption, which can sometimes cause issues with player stuttering, battle eye timeouts, and so on. Server crashes tied to vehicle and or AI. This weekly designer Peter tells us all about the Enforce script, and that once it was ready for production, the team started rewriting all of the gameplay and support scripts from the old SQF script, which offered us to become largely independent on programmers and to keep the game open for modding. This process was quite difficult and tedious, mainly because of missing backwards compatibility, specific design and technical dependencies, limitations found down the road, and all that mixed together with our commitment to release playable version of DayZ in early access program. All that led us to maintain and develop basically two versions of the game side by side, obsolete one for the public to play in the meantime, and the new one for us developers to make the game as good as possible, one that you players would enjoy later. Peter personally refers to this new version of DayZ internal as DayZ 2.0. Moving on, we have lead gameplay programmer Mirak. Synchronization of the new animation system is done. Now we have to apply the new synchronization rules to the user action system, and the events performed only on server side. New player controller is now receiving support for melee combat, which will allow our animation team to tweak the combat animations in-game. Also, it's important to note that our Bratislava team is applying the new animation system to AI units. This will allow us to have much better interactions between players and infected and animals. And finally this week we have lead map designer Adam. One of the most important things for the new forest was to have enough variety. There are four key features that allow us to have more varied forests. First, we've got roughly six different generation templates for each tree species. You can imagine this simply as young, mixed, older forests and so on. Achieving such variety would not be possible with the old models, so we have got at our disposal a completely new set of vegetation that contains roughly three times more models than the old one, and it is still growing. To give you an idea, let's take a look at the standard beach forest case. The picture on screen now shows an example of available models for beach forest. This is quite a big change compared to the old vegetation set, where we had like three available models for the specific species, and the picture is not even showing all models. We also do have dead tree variants. I should also mention that this is not just the case for beach trees. We do have similar size sets for oaks, pines, birches, larches, and spruces. Just imagine the combinations that can be done with just one species alone. Not to mention what can we do when we combine them. We of course have some other types of species prepared too, for rarer use within forests and of course, for solitary ones within fields and settlements. Please keep in mind that what you see here is still work in progress and does not represent final look. These two pictures here are to give you an idea of how the transformation from old to new forest could look on a small patch of forest within Starry Sobor fields. We are currently working with roughly a doubled object count, that equals roughly 2.6 million of vegetation objects. Our PCs are running map benchmarks overnight, multiple times on multiple machines if necessary, to get an overview of how does the current version of Chernerus with new forests perform. We can then use this information to make additional changes to the generation, forest density, and the picture on screen now shows what kind of result we get from one type of benchmark that we do. Also in this picture on screen we can see some slight map changes, northwest airfield and down the western edge of Chernerus. Take a closer look. There is still a lot of work ahead of the team, but it is awesome to see that things are finally coming together. The team cannot wait to share more info about the things coming with 0.62 update. Yes, there is definitely more to talk about. And that's all for this week's status report highlight for the 21st of February 2017. Thank you for joining me, and all links will be in the description below. As always, read the status report in full for yourselves for the most amount of information that they hold. And I'll see you peeps next time.